Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and I'm very excited about today's pick a card reading. It is the Secret Garden themed. Now, you will see I have a couple of copies here of the book. You know, the purple one there, that's a special edition. But the star of the show is here straight ahead. It's The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And this copy I have right there, I found it at a flea market. It was on a table. Uh, it was the only book there. It looked like it was a bunch of stuff being sold from like an estate sale. And when I opened the front cover and saw that it was copyrighted for 1911, I knew this book had come out in 1911. I believe this was a series of magazine uh, stories. I think it was in American Magazine or something like that. And it later became a book. Now, I am not 100% sure that this is a first edition copy of The Secret Garden because there could be, it's from my understanding, especially from that era, there could be a first printing, a second printing, a third printing of a first edition. They wouldn't really call it a second edition until they made some sort of big edit. So again, I'm not a book expert. I just know that if this isn't a, a first edition, <laughs> it's pretty darn near close. And when I saw this on the table at this market and I saw that in her cover, I handed it back to the woman and I said, I think you have something on your hands here. I'm not sure, but you shouldn't just have two dollars marked on it and the woman smiled at me and I got tingles when she smiled at me and she said I'll take two dollars for it and I said no really <laughs> I, I don't 100% know what it's worth but really you should get it checked out and she said I think you're the one who's supposed to have it it says two dollars I'll take two dollars for it so I paid two dollars in Tiffin Ohio for this book which could potentially be a first edition now we are going to be using the secret garden cards i couldn't believe it when this deck when i found this deck i was like that is too perfect we're going to be doing that i'm also using uh our enchanted botanical deck and i chose one cabochon for each group now you can choose by the cabochon or what's more intended here is that we choose by these now these don't have messages on them they're just gemstones so this is a rose quartz. This is an amethyst. And this is green aventurine. So go ahead and tune in. See which pile is calling to you. Okay, group one, let's see what you have. Number one, you do have your rose quartz here, which is all about a gentle love, loving yourself, healing that inner child. And yes, if you want to find love, you could certainly tune into the energy of this crystal. So we'll just have that living right there for the moment. We'll start with the cabochon here. Uh, if I could turn it around. <laughs> we have Archangel Metatron. And Metatron is all about the Book of Life, the Akashic Records, sacred geometry, intuition. And so there's a message here about strengthening that part of you or that understanding of your truest nature. All right, which is the true nature of every human being, but you're ready to look at it. So that will live right there too. And let's see. We have strength, elegance, <laughs> love that, and innocence. Oh, that's interesting because this crystal here kind of goes with that it's that the innocence of a child your childlike nature as we were saying all right i want to get more of the story here so we have release lighten your load joy make time for the little things today discover look at the early dew drops before they disappear with the morning sun. So take a moment to enjoy what's happening around you. And then finally, we have surprises. Venture down the rabbit hole. All right. So I also want to put in here the word serenity because 
This is talking about endurance, okay? And it's interesting, I wasn't even thinking as I was putting these on the table here, these two kind of go closely together. So something that you had to be very, very strong about, maybe it's your entire life story. You know, the story of the secret garden starts with a little girl who is not loved and therefore finds it very, very hard to love, right? And she has to find magic and bringing a garden back to life, right? And that's where she finds connection. And actually in the story, she finds connection through initial tragedy. So that is what we end up transforming through, yes? So this is what we need to have strength about and it's time to release that. It's time to allow yourself to have joy. And I love, look at this, joy discover surprises. When you're in your joy <laughs> and you're living in the flow of elegance, when you are allowing yourself to enjoy the beauty around you, where you see the beauty in yourself. You don't just see things as right or wrong, this or that, for me, not for me. You know, have an open mind about what might bring you joy. You know, where, and that's what elegance means to me. <laughs> it means investing in yourself. It means being in a flow, having things just kind of come together. Everything looks effortless, right? The most elegant looking people seem as if everything just came together by magic, right? So we have this message here to try to find the light from whatever circumstance or circumstances you have been through. It's time to discover, time to discover yourself, discover your innocence. Look at how close discover is to innocence. And then you chose the rose quartz as well. So there's this want for gentleness. There's a want maybe to recapture this inner child essence, okay? The story of your inner child. And that leads to beautiful surprises. Part of that surprise might be something outside of you. It might be a, an opportunity, a job opportunity, a love opportunity, a chance to live somewhere else, what have you. Or it could be the discovery of you that brings many surprises, realizing your own energetic flow and what that can create, what that can bring about. This whole reading and even the theme of a garden, right? A secret garden. I always said, you know, one day when I buy a house, I am absolutely going to consider the backyard. And I, and I want to bring somebody in who can create a secret garden for me. Because this was one of my favorite books as a kid. This and Peter Rabbit. I will be doing a Peter Rabbit themed reading as well. I have to edit this stuff and get this stuff off my... <laughs> off my discs here and then I can you know uh, film some more but um, I want to take some time with that but this whole idea of a garden this very archangel Ariel this is uh, nature angels this is feeling detoxified and it's interesting that a little girl transforms through nature right so where can you transform and give yourself this shot where can you enjoy and take in and know you deserve to witness beauty? Seriously. Even if you kind of rolled your eyes as I said that. <laughs> Someone did. <laughs> I could feel you. Um, <laughs> maybe time to release that. Release that, that judgment. You know, Where have you allowed your heart to close off? That's part of that elegance, right? Where, where you open up and you're in the flow. Where can you enjoy the beauty around you? And where can you start to discover, that word discover there, where can you discover that the story you've been living maybe isn't the truth? Maybe it's not the whole truth. Maybe this sense of um, I'm not good enough or I'm not wanted or, or what have you for you, that can be let go of now. Some of you went through a rejection with a relationship. And you're coming here because, you know, again, the, the whole, you know, rose quartz, it's all about love. <sighs> you know, this is a general reading and I would, 
for most of you that are watching this, I would say you got to let that go. It's not what you thought it was. I know you wanted to find someone and settle in your heart with them, but it never would have been right. You never would have been treated properly. And if you let go of your preconceived notions about your connections with others, you might find surprising friends, maybe even a love partner amongst people you never thought you would have anything in common with. All right. So we are going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you so much love and take care. Bye-bye. Okay, group two. So let's see what your message is here. If you felt drawn, and obviously you did because you chose this, to the amethyst. Amethyst is good for just about everything, okay? <laughs> this actually resonates with Archangel Raphael, uh, which again, people don't typically think of Raphael because it's not a green stone, but in fact, he does help you to understand what you need to heal. This is a good travel stone. Raphael helps with travel. This is really great for meditation. And I feel like a lot of you need to be embracing that. So let's see what your cabochon says. Archangel Sandalfin. So again, actually Sandalfin works really well with this too, this whole theme. I love it. <laughs> Sandalfin is in charge of the Earth Star Chakra, all about grounding. He understands what it is to be human. Uh, that therefore he helps you balance your physical and spiritual traits. Okay. He's also known as the Archangel of Music and can help you attune your frequency through sound healing. So we'll put that there. Actually, we're going to have to move these guys because we're going to need the space. All right. <laughs> so first up, we have tranquility. I'm working for a little bit of peace here. Courage. Yeah. You're about to do a huge undertaking and you're gathering your strength and dreams. Oh, look at you. Oh my gosh. Okay. So a lot of you, you're getting ready to go after your dreams here. Hmm. Before I even get on to anything else, that's interesting because we have Sandalfin. He's basically telling you to be grounded and just make sure that you are coming from a place of integrity with everything. But I just heard go for it. Now, Every one of you will be different, okay? Your situations are different. But dream, dream. And tranquility makes me think of meditation, <laughs> which is right there. So there's this encouragement to tune into your deeper aspect, tune into who you really are, okay? So this, we say this all the time, but this is a lot of having to go through the process of deconditioning. Right, because if you don't do that, <laughs> you're just going to manifest, you know, more of the same that you ever had in your life, right? So, if you want something new, if you really want to go after your dreams here, look at what's right in the center there. Courage. All right, just make sure that you're not just in the ego and dreaming without a plan. That's what Sandalfin helps you with. Okay, so we have generosity, sow seeds of kindness. We have beauty. Dare to be tender and strongly vulnerable. Bloom and attract more butterflies. <laughs> stop hiding. Yeah, stop hiding. Look, it kind of lands near the dreams. And we have play. Among the grass and wild violets lie undisturbed little secrets to uncover. That is beautiful. And also play puts you in a higher frequency, right? <laughs> puts you in a higher frequency. And when you're in that higher frequency, you can start tapping into your dreams, having a firm understanding of that. And then Sandalfin shows up to go, okay, well, how do you want to make it real? How do you want to make it manifested? Okay. So notice what that first card though is. Generosity. There's talk here of generosity of spirit. Go for your dreams. Just make sure that you have a good solid plan. That you're coming from a good place. Don't doubt yourself. Courage and beauty coming <laughs> right next to one another. I mean, that's having the courage to see your own beauty. And then that leads you to blooming. And I even want to say play along with dreams. That's what your life starts to feel like. Whatever you choose to participate in. It's as if you are 
some of you are taking this like I'm going to play the game of life, not not the board game, but I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to just uh, you know be conniving. I'm going to be competitive because that's how you get ahead, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I hear people argue that all the time. However, <laughs> you want to be in a good energy, you have to keep your integrity. That's where generosity is coming from. Okay, be in your integrity. Help where you can. Show up when you can. And this opens sort of like a portal of creativity, this portal of, um, you know, creating the next chapter of your life. But if you step on other people, the bloom is going to fade. Because that's just, I don't, I don't understand all the universe and how it functions, but I know I've seen that happen. People who were on their high horse getting knocked off real quick. So bring no ego. Bring no ego. Now, for those of you who kind of, you're already in a different space. You already understand this. You know, I'm ready to open up. I want, I want to see and experience my life from a place of love. Let, let's unpack that a little bit here. Because when we're coming from a place of love, you can find fun in anything. We've all had a really rough year, haven't we? I'm recording this in 2020, in September of 2020, although it's timeless, okay? <laughs> and this whole year has been, you can't. The power struggles have been unbelievable. Uh, big corporations are going after people for no reason, you know, this sort of thing. We're starting to see this cracking open of the power structure. And yet to keep my sanity, I, I just kind of, I would meditate <laughs> and I would ask for inspiration. And I started to get little pictures in my mind, these little vignettes of ways that I could approach readings differently. And I started making stuff. I started combining my two loves, literature and reading. And that was an interesting <laughs> little moment, but I'm embracing the beauty of what's already there. And that's part of what's going on here, right? So just find, and, and again, find your heart, connect to the heart, open it up, see what is there that you haven't seen yet. And that is going to take a lot of courage because a lot of people are afraid of their heart space. They're afraid of feeling. They're afraid that the emotions are going to be so powerful. They're going to feel so much pain or there's just going to be too much. That's why we have a lot of people functioning in the world in the way that they do. But if you can embrace this and understand that you're in the process of blooming, right? you're in the process of blooming and it's time to play. It's time to enjoy your life. It's time to put some of this other stuff away. Believe in yourself. You know, like I said, have a plan, but give yourself this chance. That is your message for today. We're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye. Hi there, group three. So let's see what your message is. Now you were drawn to green aventurine. This can be great luck, prosperity, and releasing in a way blockages by just bringing them into your awareness. <laughs> so sometimes knowing is half the battle, right? So that's really what this helps with, but it helps you open up and to believe in yourself so that you can allow in uh, all that the universe has to offer you. So wonderful, wonderful crystal to choose. So where shall we put him? We'll put him there. All right, let's see what your cabochon is. We have Archangel Michael. So Michael is all about protection, clarity, courage, kind of being a spiritual warrior <laughs> if you resonate with that there is a belief that when you come into this world whatever name that your parents kind of feel instinctively they should call you I guess that sometimes it can have a correlation with an archangel and in my case my name is Michelle that's the feminine version of Michael and you know I do have a very 
you know, cut to the chase, very truthful kind of way of speaking. So it, I think that's interesting. Again, that's not going to apply to everybody, of course. But I just, I, when I first read that, I thought that was interesting. All right, so let's get your cards out here. We have inspiration. <laughs> you have luck. I swear, each one of the groups, they've gotten a card that correlates. And I didn't look at these cards. I just shuffled them, made the little piles, set them aside. We'll read them, whatever. Every group has gotten something that correlates with the crystal that they chose. And then we have passion. This comes with Archangel Nathaniel. Okay, Archangel Nathaniel is not an Archangel you should be working with unless you're really ready to cut to the chase okay <laughs> because nathaniel will shoot you into the future and it'll be just i don't know there's a reason why we give a word of caution around that because you can get so um you know kind of get ahead of yourself that you trip over your own feet i guess is how i want to put it or you might get um to a point where your passion is turning into obsession <laughs> right which is not healthy but look at this. This is my favorite word these days. Inspiration. Inspiration. Luck and passion. Those are phenomenal words. There's a beautiful combination of messages here for you. So there could be a time, or maybe it's already happened for some of you, where some inspiration has hit and the message here is make time for it. Okay. <laughs> make time for it because that inspiration... You know, it's not about everybody uh, connects luck or fortune or whatever to one specific little, very limited idea of what that looks like. And in reality, the inspiration is going to make you love your life. It's going to make you feel detoxified, you know, grounded, all those beautiful things, which then changes your frequency, which then draws in good luck. And that luck could involve, oh my gosh, I suddenly understand my passion now. Okay. So for your secret garden cards, we have radiance. Keep your head held high and follow the sun. Yeah, wait, let's, you know what? This says keep your head held high and follow the sun. It's landing near inspiration. I feel like your inspiration in projects that you've tried to do in the past Maybe have gotten rejected. It's something along those lines. Okay. But relax. Delight in powdered gold sunshine. But be relaxed because one or two or even ten people's opinion of what you are creating doesn't really matter. Okay. Do you know how many authors get rejected numerous times? That's a fun thing to Google. Go look up how many famous authors or even just like, you know, literature heroes, how many of them were rejected numerous times <laughs> before someone uh, sort of validated their voice by giving their stamp of approval. Okay. Then we have patience. Wait for the fruit to ripen. Yeah. So you're redoing something. You're going back to the drawing board here. Oh, because you hadn't really fully developed. All right. So let's say this, because we're doing a little book theme here. Let's say you're writing a book, you know, what, or whatever project you're working on. And you write it for what you think the market is going to want. And you try to show it to somebody and they're like, nah, market changed. Goodbye. Right? They reject you. And you feel like, oh my gosh, that was like a year of my life or two years of my life. <laughs> right? That's my heart and soul on the page. But is it? That's the question. Because you were not tapped into whatever your project is, whatever it is that you're trying to do in life. You weren't really tapped in to your fullest potential to bring that art forward. Rather, you were creating according to what other people would approve of. According to their expectations. Because nothing scarier and putting your art, which involves the soul, which involves the soul expression and putting it into this 3D world and have people reject it. That's why it cuts so deep. 
<laughs> artistic rejection, I feel is like, in my mind, worse than love rejection. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you're not into it? Whatever, bye. But, you know, <laughs> if somebody rejects my writing or, you know, something along those lines, I, it, it does, it cuts deep. It cuts deep. So this is telling you to not forget your radiance, that that inspiration is still flowing and to relax into whatever you're doing. Now, again, I'm using creative projects as an example, but you could apply this to anything. If you didn't get that job, or maybe you did uh, kind of get rejected by a love partner, wave bye-bye and keep it moving, <laughs> right? All right, and then patience. Now, the patience with the passion is saying you're still in the role of self-discovery here, okay? So let the passion bloom a little bit. All right. And then you have share. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I'm sitting there holding this in my hand. I didn't have it turned over. Wow. The last card is share. The busy bee should still make time for each flower. All right. Now this is talking about, you know, be balanced and share your time and, and all of that. But this, you know, we we're just talking about all those creative projects and all those things that you want to get out into the world, whatever it is that you're trying to, you know, make, you know what I'm saying? And look at how this goes. When you're tapped into your authentic passion, then you can share it with the world. It's interesting because we all vibrate at a frequency that we will, <laughs> we will live day to day under a lie. Most of the things that you see around you are a lie. And yet, when it comes to something that, that involves the soul's voice, and we're going to put it out there, if it's not 100% authentic, sometimes people don't even see it. Isn't that interesting? So eventually you will rewrite that book. You will approach your painting again. You'll try for that job. You'll meet someone new. You know, you'll figure out what your true joy in life is. And then something can flow from that experience. And then and only then will you be able to share. All right. So we're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye.